This mini Maltese had just been operated on, and a stitched up wound can be seen lined along its bottom. What could it have been operated on for? Well, this was actually a case of perineal hernia, and in this video, we will go through two different cases of perineal hernia in dogs. This is a Be Kind to Pets veterinary educational video sponsored by Tupayo Vets. Twenty third of January two thousand and fifteen. Okay, perineal hernias in dogs. Now, perineal hernias are a defect in the pelvic diaphragm here. So there's a defect, and the, the muscle there's a big defect in the muscle. So the intestines, the fat, and the bladder or prostate in a male dog will come out, making it very big. Now there are, there are three, two types of uh, perineal hernias as you can see from here. Now one type is, this is the normal anatomy. The bladder is inside here, the prostate is there. This is a male dog. Now in, uh, in, the, in this case, this dog, uh, this dog, and this dog, this is, this is what happened. Um, in this dog, there's a big hernia. The bladder has come out here at the lower part. The bladder come out here, there's a big swelling. And then the rest, the fat and the intestine come out on top here. But now this is because it's uh, operated already, so you can see nothing. It's a flat. But I have other videos showing this dog with a big swelling here. Okay, so this is considered the case where the bladder comes out, a full bladder. But there's no problem in the uh, urination. Now, the, the other type of hernia is where there is prosthetic enlargement. The prostate is enlarged. Normal prostate is this size, very small. But in some male dogs, as they grow older, the prostate becomes bigger and bigger. Now, in this case, the prostate comes very big. And, uh, okay, it goes. Then you can see from here, this is a case I'm talking about where the dish of is a big. The prostate is hernated into the lower part. Okay, uh, okay. we're talking about this 10 year old male, not near the former Renan. Okay, so in this case, the prostate is enlarged. And this prostate has uh, herniated out. You can see the prostate is like this. And uh, it shows show here. And uh, on, the, on the drawing, I can show, uh, this is the dot actually. You can see this hernia, the, the prostate has come out to here. Uh, this, this is the one where you can feel a very hard lump. So it's not a tumor, it's, it's a prostate actually. But in the other dog, just on the white mini Maltese, there was a soft lump here. This soft lump is the bladder inside the hernia. So now I go to the next slide. Next slide is after the surgery, same as the other dog, just now you saw, we just do a cut here, simple hernia. In similar we just cut and then we just uh, push everything back in and then we stitch up like just now you saw in the dog. Okay, so now this case I want to talk about is because the prostate. Now this is the prostate as you can see. It's very much enlarged and you look at the size is similar to this. Let's see this drawing. This is the enlarged prostate and you can see this is the normal prostate normal prostate and prostate. Then now we see the next slide. Next slide will show you that there's a lot of this uh, something like cysts like that. Hyperplasia. And look at this, it's similar to this. So this, this shows that this is a prostate, benign prosthetic hyperplasia because there's no pain or infection. The enlarged prostate in the has lodged in the left perineal hernia of this 10 year old Pomeranian. Okay, then we see the next slide. And uh, 
it looks much like this. It looks so much like a tumor, but it's not a tumor. Inside this uh, perineal hernia. Another view. Now so you can see really. This this is a very rare thing. You seldom see such a big and large prostate in a hernia. Normally you see a bladder. Yes, bladder is quite common. So this why I'm showing you this. It's a firm golf ball growth during surgery to repair the hernia. You can see this, but this dog has no problems peeing and pooping. So, so there is no infection. So it's a benign prosthetic hyperplasia. There you can see compared to this drawing, it's almost similar. You can see that. The, so this is definitely a very uh, rare finding of a large prostate being herniated into the perineal hernia okay so now we see the next slide okay so i'm just showing this video because I, I i just want the vets to know that when you see something like this firm and hard it's not the abdominal tumor but actually it's a prostate especially when you see the structure the structure uh, it definitely is not a bladder you have this cystic structure the bladder is definitely a plain uh, transparent membrane, there's no cyst around. Okay, so just be careful. If you cut this off, that means there's a big problem because the urethra actually from the bladder, come here, there, show it. The urethra from the bladder goes to the prostate and then it comes out to the penis. So if you, if you think this is an abdominal tumor and you, you cut it away, then this dog will die because. Uh, you have cut away the, the urethra, so you cannot pee. So be careful. And uh, that is the, the prosthetic hyperplasia. Now we come to this, this uh, just now the dog, hernia uh, hernia of this, uh, that, I'll show this dog, who's going home today, this is the fourth day and it heals very nicely fourth day of uh, repair, simple repair okay now the, the dog is here Okay, now you can see this video there this dog is the you can see here, it's so wonderful here this ah, male okay. is male it's about 8 years old has a large swelling here on the right perineum so this is called a right perineal Okay. Just on the right side. No, this is the swing. left side. There is no hernia. This one is actually now, it's a bladder. I feel a what soft lump here. There, bladder. So this is not prostate. The, the swelling was very small. Mm. But the owner is the intestine. Didn't do anything about it. Intestine, no, but still the dog is eating and drinking. So, so there is no this problem. It's different from the other. Now this hernia. Mm. It it happens mostly in male dogs. So uh, they are not sterilized. This one is not sterilized and there's another testicle here a retained testicle here there okay so you can see yeah, this most is of the, the most of the time you don't find it in female bladder, bladder, dogs, it's, standard have, bladder. it's very rare in females so it's believed to be due to the hormones uh, the testosterone which uh, affects the, the pelvic diaphragm so the opening becomes loose the muscles split and the intestines the momentum effect and sometimes the bladder and the prostate comes up. Now, you look at this, this uh, hernia is very big, so it's very hard to push in right now. Eh? Now I can feel something here. Uh, this is a bladder. Something so. here. Eh? So, we don't know whether it's a stool or not. Uh, you look at here, it, it looks like, it looks like mm, it could be a, a large prostate. No, it's a bladder actually. It's when it's open up, you see. Uh, it's like hypertrophy. Benign prosthetic hypertrophy. In this case, it's not. Yeah, yeah it's quite a, a bit long here. Mm. This could be the prostate because old dogs have prosthetic enlargement. Mm. Now, this part of the momentum fat and uh, intestines. But so far, the dog can eat and drink and pee and poo. Okay, so in this case. Go to the educational part of the previous cases. We finished for Now, the previous cases are done. So, we see this one, the cases is here, there. Okay, now this one. So just now the, the mini Maltese is actually this one where the bladder has come out. It has compared to the palm. The palm was the prostate that has come out. So these are the two cases I want to show. And uh, the prosthetic 
hypertrophy, that's why it is so large. Normally it's very small, so you, you don't see it coming out of the hernia. It doesn't come in the perineal hernia. Now, there, there are three methods of treatment. The simple method is uh, just the simple method is just uh, make a cut, make a cut and then stitch up uh, the muscle area one to the other. I won't go into the technical part, but basically you stitch the muscle, simple interval suture stitch from one side to the inner splinter side. Okay, that, that is the surgery and then after that you just close up the skin like this. So this is a simple hernia, simple hernia roughy. Simple hernia roughy, and that's what we did in these two dogs. Okay, then the other one is a more complicated one because the hole is too big. If the hole is too big, then we use the mesh. Okay, this is the mesh. It costs at least hundred dollars per mesh uh, for this hernia repair. So this is very expensive for this surgery but in certain cases where the, where the hernia is very big and the muscles are very weak are very weak then we use this and uh, so we cut we cut the mesh and uh, make it into a funnel we cut half of it uh, make the funnel I mean depend on the size of the hole uh, make the funnel and put it in put inside the, the hernia hole Okay, the hernia hole is so big, you can see from this side, it's so big. Then we put this cone in, we put this cone in and uh, further in, put further in, then we stitch up with a non absorbable nylon, the muscles, the muscle of the, the hernia side. And after that, we close up the skin. Now, this is a very expensive method because this mesh is costly so uh, the third method is where they use the muscles where they transpose the muscle the muscle from one side to the other side now this one I would not uh, go into detail but it's called muscle transposition muscle transposition and this one is more, more uh, detailed and technical to do so there are three methods of repairing the perineal hernia. At least three methods. Okay, can I finish? Thank you. To conclude with some words of advice, it is possible for perineal hernia to reoccur even after surgery. Hence, early detection and treatment is important, as it is the most effective way to prevent the recurrence of this condition. Owners will also save themselves the need to fork out money for surgical treatment. Do make it a point to neuter your dog early when it is young, as there is a higher incidence of perineal hernia amongst non-neutered male dogs. Anesthetic risks are higher the older the dog, which reiterates the need for early prevention or treatment. If a dog does not receive surgery for perineal hernia, the hernia may become gigantic. Should the dog lick at the lump until its skin ruptures, its intestinal contents may come out. In very severe cases, entrapment of a loop of intestine into the hernia may cause significant pain and loss of the blood supply, leading to subsequent death. In some cases, the dog would also be unable to urinate. Hence, the repercussions of perineal hernia, depending on its severity, can be very morbid and dangerous for your dog. But we may seek solace in the fact that all of this can be prevented so long as owners are well informed and take the necessary measures to prevent perineal hernia from occurring in their dogs. For more videos, do visit us at topayovets.com.